was calling on Jesus. He mm -hmm. loves you. You know, from Psalms 139, he mm -hmm. loves you. You, there, you. Wherever you go, you can always call on him. And that was one of the main things I, I taught my kids is always to pray. Call on Jesus. Just call on him. You know, that's one of the, I don't know if we're going this far, but that's one of the prayers that I pray over them. I said, Lord, um, stir your spirit up inside my children. Don't let them forget the things that I taught them about you. I know the sacrifices that I did, you know, yeah. for them mm -hmm. in the things of the Lord. And I know um, how I tried to live my life, you know, mm -hmm. to be the example, to let yeah. them see me at church one way and at home the same. Hey, and welcome to Winning Conversations. We are so glad you are here. Today is a very fun episode. Um, it's the Friday before Mother's Day, so we just want to say Happy Mother's Happy Day! Happy Mother's Day. Day! We're so glad y'all are here. Um, I ha we have an incredible panel. Of course, Andy is with me. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. And we have the lovely Pastor Nat. You doing well? Yes, I yes. am. Yes. Ready for Mother's Day? Yes, ready so get ready. Spoiled by your kids? That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. No, no pressure. <laughs> And we have Miss Betty Wright here. How are you today? I am blessed. I'm doing well. Very good. Yes. We're so glad you're here today. Thank you. We wanted a group of stellar mothers to do this episode. And so you stellar. guys. Stellar. I like that. Yeah. Stellar. Yeah. Um, so y'all were the top of our list. But um, tell us first, um, how many kids you have? What your motherhood experience was like? Um, I'll go first and then we can go okay. around. I have okay. three kids. I have three boys. Um, Lucas. Mom. One boy mom. Boy mom. Boy mom. <laughs> it is wild and dirty and smelly at my house a lot of the time. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, 13 year old and then twin eight year olds. So you bought stock in Febreze. We did. Yeah. yeah. And tied and band aids. <laughs> oh, and that sure. is so funny. Yeah. I'm the opposite. Two girls. Yeah. Two girls. But a baby. Girl so she's, yeah, she's smelly too, though. <laughs> I mean, both of them are kind of smelly. <laughs> but the baby's smelly. But yeah. Uh -huh. I've, yeah, I feel like I have a, u a unique perspective on motherhood. I think you do, yeah. Yeah, yeah single mom for a little while. Single mom, teen mom, yeah. technically. Yeah. Now mom and wife, new mom. Yeah, wow. lots of perspectives. Mom, mom, <laughs> and then like, my mom. You, know, <laughs> you know mom upside down is wow. 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 I know, is that cool? It is cool. Front and back. Never thought <laughs> Front and back. Wow. It's mom and wow. Just wow. Mom. wow. <laughs> Just wow. And Betty, Miss Betty, tell us about yours. Yes. I have four children, two boys and two girls. So I balanced. I, I yeah. Balance you out. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, how many kids and do you have? I have four. <laughs> four. Three boys and one girl. Three Whoa. boys, one girl. Yeah, but we're also grandmas. Yeah, we're grandmoms. I have nine grandkids. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yes. A lot of grandkids. That is That's awesome. Yeah. It's different with grandkids, isn't it? It's different. You want to mother them. You you know you want to help your children out because we think that they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> mm -hmm. we, we're not saying it, but that's somewhere inside. Yeah, you you know. don't know how to do this. Like, and their response is, "They're alive, aren't they? Yeah. They're yeah, here. They're so you get to send them home at the end yes. of the day. Oh, yeah. So you get to that. spoil them, give them candy, and then send them home <laughs> yeah. to your way. kids. We jump on the bed and eat marshmallows, and then go home to their. Parents. Yeah, yes. thanks this at home. so much. <laughs> thanks so this much. This is a rule at Grammy's house. Yeah, got it. Mom and Dad's house. Yeah, it's definitely way different. Yeah. Well, I uh, spent a little bit of time talking to lots of moms, lots of moms in our world, and uh, and just kind of fielded what their thoughts on motherhood were, what yeah. questions they have, and so some of these questions just came from a variety of people who are trying to walk it out and do motherhood well. Um, and the first one was really just about preparing to be a mother, which I know. <laughs> You had the most recent experience with yeah. that. Your, how old is Lily? Lily is almost five months. So she's just baby. So she's little. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't prepare. There's no preparing. Like, I don't feel like there's, you can fully prepare. You can have everything ready, like in the natural, like their room and like all this stuff. You're, you know, doctor's appointments, things like that. Like you feel like, oh, I'm ready. But it's not until they're here that you like fully like your mother instincts kick in yes. and you're that and right. even then like new things happen new things come up like Addie's now a preteen so there's like a whole different 
so you're still not ready for that. Like I've said it many times in the past couple of months, I was not prepared for this. I was not prepared for this. So it's just, you're always learning and growing and doing what you can to Fake it till you make it. Fake it till you yeah. make it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yay! We're doing this. Yes. We're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. But if Ready I would, not, I would go. just say for any like woman who's wanting to be a mother or about to like expecting or anything, you know, you're never gonna feel fully prepared yeah. for it or ready for it. Like, don't have that expectation. Right. Did you guys feel ready? <laughs> I didn't feel ready. I mean, we believe God and we, yeah. we had, we had a little bit of a journey getting, in, getting to having kids. Yeah. Um, but, but I, you know, you think you're ready. You think yeah. you prayed all the prayers. Like, did y'all feel, feel that tension? I didn't because I was 21 when I had my first child and young Merrick. So I just felt that mother instinct just to take care of this baby, you know, mm-hmm. just take care of this child. But again, I wasn't prepared either for all the other stuff that came along. Yeah, yeah the get sure. here. You know, you're like, where's that in the book? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Right. Right. What, page, right. what, page what page was that on? That you know, yeah. I don't, I don't see it, but didn't see it. Didn't see yeah. it. So that is we hilarious. Had to, we had to go by ear. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. and just make sure that they were taken care of. Yeah. There's trial and error with yes. each kid. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you feel bad for your first child because yeah. it's like we've never been here before. Right. You know, mm-hmm. you haven't, and I have it. Both right. of us, we're learning together. Together. Mm-hmm. So, I, and but I, I'm very thankful for family. Mm-hmm. I'm thankful for yeah. watching my aunts and watching my mom and watching oh. my grandma, and so that helps. I believe that's that's one way I think I was prepared. Was I relied on that. I relied on mm. how did mom do it or how, or, or calling mom, you know, mm. or grandma, how did grandma do it? What would she do? You know? Um, and I come from an Hispanic heritage, so we had different ideas on how to do things. Yes. <laughs> it's like old wives tales. It's like, you're going to rub what on his belly and make him feel better. <laughs> I'm like, are you making a Caesar salad? Oh what? my gosh. <laughs> and, <laughs> No, a little true. bit of oil, a little bit of, you know, and yeah. some garlic maybe and some salt. We're like, are we making a salad on we, his belly? Don't try this at home. <laughs> don't try this at <laughs> home. Don't try this but at home. But you know what? It actually worked. And and we're back, you know, <laughs> we're back in the room going, I think it was just the rubbing, that the warmness of the oil. No, maybe. it was for sure the garlic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But, um, but it was fun. I yeah. mean, you, you know, you, you trust God, you pray a lot, um, yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, your third came out perfect. So. <laughs> Just kidding. You had a lot of experience by then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just, the boys the, raised her. By yeah. the third one, you're like, it's just, a, just what, what's one more, right? Yeah, yeah, explain so much. Yeah. The boys yeah. just raised her. Yeah. 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 Explain so much. <laughs> Um, one of the questions that we had, or just a kind of an overall thought process of, of balancing, balancing it all. You know, we talk about our plates getting really full as mothers, um, we're wives, we're moms. We, some of us have jobs, some of us have, um, ministries, uh, our personal walk with the Lord. What was it? What, what were some things you did that helped you balance all of those areas? What are, how did you put the first things first, so to speak? As far as job and ministry, yeah, I think the whole time my kids were were growing up, we were in church. So, I mean, we were pastors, so we were always going to church. Mm-hmm. I think they were just raised at church. Yeah. We just kind of, they just all came along. Them. We just right? did everything all together. Mm-hmm. There was, um, I mean, obviously prioritizing to feed them. That was the main thing. They got to eat. And we so got fed. True. And they got fed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and, and. It is naturally true. This the squeaky wheel does get the oil. So, um, but at times, you know, whenever you have to go to work, obviously, then you've got to prioritize because that has to happen. But your relationship with your spouse is really important, and so we made sure that we would try to at least have. And I know it was different when you're having three little ones. You know, yes. mm-hmm. as opposed to having just one or two. Yes. I don't know why three makes a difference, but yes. um, it was like date night maybe once a month. You know, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> if right. we get a, a set a goal, we're going to do this, and or you know, we'll go 
away together maybe once a year. Mm -hmm. You know, just setting a goal and and that's important, Mm -hmm. you know, to spend time together. Otherwise, it's just never going to happen. So you have to prioritize that. Well, it was different for me because I was a housewife. You know, I was at home. My husband worked. Um, a lot of times he worked out of the state. You know, he was in construction. Oh, wow. So he, it was just me and the kids. And um, that's just what I did. <laughs> you yeah. know, I nurtured. I, that's what I did. You know, I made sure they were taken care of. Um, um, I made sure every day when they, you know, started school, when they came in from school, the dinner would be on the table. I did that every day. Um I would wash the clothes and, and iron all day make, and make sure the clothes are ironed up for the week. I did stuff like that. The rooms were cleaned. I did all of that. Wow. So it was um, it was just different and, and all that poor. And they watched all of that. The new mom would be there for them, you know. And um, that's just how, I, it, back in my time anyway, it was just like different than what you guys are going going through now. Did you have to prioritize time for yourself? I did. I Like when I got them off the school in the mornings, um, I would um, clean my house, yeah. and then I would get in prayer and Bible study. So prayer and the Bible study was what, what gave me all that yeah. energy and yeah. mm-hmm. strength. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. Yes. Because it's not just prioritizing your relationships. It's prioritizing your mm-hmm. yeah. yourself also, right. which, like, mm-hmm. as women, I feel like women in general do this, is we feel guilty when we – prioritize ourselves Mm -hmm. and so we either just don't do it or Mm -hmm. I don't know we suffer through it which Mm -hmm. is silly to do like we can't be our best selves for our family or for our kids Mm -hmm. if we're not investing in Mm -hmm. ourselves Mm -hmm. and I'm like being a single mom too I and just having Addie I'd be like well I need to just take care of her or she's not going to understand and you know but your kids will benefit from it if you're taking right. time for you right I really get into um I'm I am mean, naturally very good at, pri- at multitasking I can mm-hmm. do about four things at once and usually awesome. do them fairly We're well really good jugglers and I can do it and so taking on another thing and taking on another thing usually I like yeah. I'll figure out a way to to work it in yeah. mm-hmm. and that has been to my detriment sometimes when I'm like oh like I put all of this first and I, you know, like when's the last time that I had any time to sit down? Yeah. So Mm -hmm. I've had to learn as a mother and as a wife and I work Mm -hmm. out of the house. So, Mm -hmm. um, so I have to learn how to add margin to my, my, my schedule Mm -hmm. to where I'm not so booked Mm -hmm. that I, you know, like I don't have, I don't have, I don't like, I haven't spent the time with my kids. You know what I mean? Like just because they're, I can make sure they're fed and watered and cleaned and mm-hmm. and, <laughs> bathed yeah. and and uh, like I can meet their natural needs, but have I actually looked at their eyes and have yeah. actually seen like what has gone on in what's their world on. and, and sure. what's going on? That's where where I have to like pull back my priority, so to speak. Right. Yeah. Have to be making sure I'm putting that first, and it does start with prayer, just like you said. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you can't go by your your feelings. I mean, I mean, we can live in a your whole time that you're mothering you can just go from one guilt to another guilt to another mm-hmm. guilt mm-hmm. and you're never you're not succeeding that way and you're in mm-hmm. your children not growing that way um because you can't hear wisdom out of guilt you know yeah. so right. there has to be a place where you've got to get away you've got mm-hmm. to either take a bath and mm-hmm. you know just close the door and i just remember and i know y'all remember their little feet underneath the door are you in there <laughs> little fingers are you in there? Yeah. their little fingers or little yeah. toes are you done yet are yeah. you done so yet? annoying <laughs> or they're knocking on the door are you done yet it's like okay everybody in just come on in everybody just come on in but um so then i started taking walks it's like mm-hmm. i'm just gonna go for a walk i've got to go for a walk i gotta go pray i gotta go for a walk and so i do a lot of walking mm-hmm. but um that helps in, in getting your mind clear and getting rid of the guilt so that you can hear, you know, God, what am I supposed to do next? And who must, you know, Mm -hmm. taking care of yourself is huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. That's good. I think that mom guilt thing is a thing that, that the world would say you have to have, like you have to have some level of mom guilt or you're not doing it right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so contrary to what we're saying here, which Mm -hmm. is like, no, you can 
raise really great godly kids yeah and you can take care of yourself mm-hmm. and you can have a thriving relationship with your husband and yes. you can be close yeah. to the lord yes. like Absolutely. it's this and this and and there's no guilt or shame for yeah. taking the, mm-hmm. the extra time that you need yeah and for um putting those other things first yeah. um a scripture that kind of set me free is in deuteronomy where it says as you go, as you're coming and you're going, as you're walking, as you're yes. preparing food, then you're speaking, speaking into the life into of your lives. kids. Yes. Um, what did that rhythm look like for you all? Because when we're in the car, that's like the prime time I have with sometimes with my kids. Mm-hmm. Like we're driving somewhere yeah. and we're going to spend time talking not only about their day, but how does that, you know, how, you know, do is there a scripture that speaks to that? Or that sounds like a struggle. Have you asked God about that? How did, mm-hmm. how did that look for y'all? Go for us. <laughs> Um, really, and, and I, it's because it's your first child, you get to spend more time with them, obviously. Yeah. Um, we could sit and I could read the Bible. We could read the Bible together or read Bible stories together and you can have that time. So again, you find just the time to do it. I did a lot of praying in the shower as well, you know, and, and teaching. I think one of my favorite things to teach was calling on Jesus. He mm. loves you, you know, from Psalms 139. He mm. loves you. You, there, you, wherever you go, you can always call on him. Yes. If you know, it, it says, if you go to the lowest, he's there. If you go to yes. the mountains, he's there. Wherever mm. you go, you will call on him. Um, and that was one of the main things I, I taught my kids is always to pray, call on Jesus, just call on him, especially like when they were little and they would have bad dreams, they would wake right. up screaming Jesus. Um, and it's really interesting. I don't know if Andy's going to remember this, but um, there was a time when she had just first started driving and she was driving her oldest brother um, in the ice. There was an ice storm. It was Christmas. It was snowing or something. And she was on this road, this back road, um, and her car started to spin. Well, she yelled out, oh, Jesus. Yeah. I didn't remember this. She I thought I was going to die. Yeah. <laughs> Straight because up. There's, there was ravines or there's ditches on both sides. Right. You know, it's mm. different now than it was back then. But she was spinning. And Corey was the one that told us about it. He said, she yelled, Jesus. Mm. And that car just straightened up and kept going. And I thought, yes, thank you, Lord. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, um, Corey's not the best person to drive with either. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, they remember. I mean, even if they don't in the natural remember it, their right. spirit man knows. Yeah. Right. And again, that's yeah. something that the Holy Spirit brings back up. Right. You know. Right. So, that's good. So whatever, whatever you can teach them, that's mm-hmm. God's going to use it. Yeah. Yes. What did that look like for you? Putting the word in, putting it in, coming and going. Well, I could tell by. You know their interaction with other kids you know i knew the word was going inside of them because they were i just i didn't have to go to the school a lot <laughs> for mm-hmm. them that's getting and stuff yeah. one time i went and it was horrible that time so <laughs> never again never again <laughs> never again went with the two girls it was just the two girls the never strong-minded again. girls mm-hmm. yes and i had to go for them you know to school but um and i could tell that they were taking in what they were being taught at home you know um, That's good. Those are proud moments. Yeah. Yes, it is. And um, I don't know, that just blessed me because I didn't go through a whole lot of, I just didn't, you know, mm-hmm. back in my time, yeah. <laughs> back right. in my era. I didn't go through a whole lot with them, mm-hmm. you know. I just did what was not, like she said, I prayed a lot. I, and I was an intercessor. I remember one time I was praying, and my, my son, my baby, he was like, maybe seven or six or something like that. And he came, he said, Mama, he said, teach me how to, to read. And I said, you know, I'm reading the Old Testament. You know, mm-hmm. it's hard for me to pronounce these words. He said, Mama, I can, I can do it. And he, he read it. He sounded those words out. He Aww. said, Mama, Aww. he said, when I grow up, I'm going to be a preacher and a football player. Nice. You know, because he, you know, that's what, he played football. <laughs> He's not preaching. <laughs> <laughs> so that part. It's going to come because yeah. I believe the word is alive inside of him. Yeah. Amen. You know, yeah. you know, that's one of the, I don't know if we're going this far, but that's one of the prayers that I pray over them. I said, Lord, um, stir your spirit up inside my children. Yeah. Don't let them forget the things that I taught them about you. Yeah, you good. know, and I also pray, I said, Lord, um, the people that are in their lives that are pulling them away from you, Lord, remove those people, mm-hmm. bring people into their lives. That's going to push them to you, Yeah, you know? Always. And so, cause I know, I know the sacrifices that I did, you know, yeah. for them mm-hmm. in the things of the Lord. And I know 
um, how I try to live my life, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to be the example. That's good. To let yeah. them see me at church one way and at home the same. Yeah. Man, that's and so, so good. And I believe it's in them. Yeah. I believe it's there. Oh, You know. Yeah. That's I amazing. know a lot of times we don't have the answers. You know, we talked about calling mm -hmm. on God. Like, mm -hmm. right. I'll be asked something and I'm like, I don't know how to answer this. I don't know how mm -hmm. to respond. Yeah. Go, go talk to God for a little bit. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Go pray yeah. about it and see mm -hmm. if you can come up yeah. with, and you let me know, <laughs> like, you, let me you know, know what I mean? Yeah. Like you have yeah. that, you can always tell them and that mm -hmm. only helps build their relationship with God. Right. Mm -hmm. And Addie, she, she'll like say things that are so wise and I'm like, she's listening. Like she's, right. you know, she's getting that. And we've talked about that on the mm -hmm. podcast too, how mm -hmm. like our kids are so impressive because of what they're hearing and they're really receptive to things. And so if they're hearing the right things, right. then they're going to keep that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I always, I always trust that that word that's put in, whether it's put in through mm -hmm. church or through my mouth yeah. or through somebody else's mouth is incorruptible. Yeah. So Absolutely. even if, even if I don't see the seed like come to fruition, I know that that word is in right. there. Um, we we have a habit in our house when we're driving. I feel like I drive a lot. Same. Perhaps I do. <laughs> um, but if we see an ambulance or a fire truck or a police officer mm -hmm. going somewhere with lights and sirens on, we take a minute and we pray. It's something that, you know, like, oh, it's my turn to pray. And then it's Lucas's turn to pray. And Aww. we're just praying over whatever the situation mm -hmm. is. Yeah. And there was one time we came up to a accident had just happened in front of us. It was like a T in a road and a truck and a hit each other. And as a nurse, you know, oftentimes I'll jump out and do it. And I stopped and I prayed and I knew what I was supposed to do. And I said, you know, I kept the boys in the car and I just helped. I didn't do hardly anything. I just called 911, all I did. And um, I got back in the car and Lucas was like, you know, asking questions and what happened. And I said, you know, the ambulance is here. It's okay. There, everybody's going to be fine. And I said, what was the first thing that I did? And, and he was like, what do you mean? And I said, the first thing I had to do was pray because I didn't know what my role yeah, was in right. that. And it was six or eight months later, we see something else happen. And he was like, mom, we got to pray right. first. Yes. We don't know what to do. And I was like, you're right. You're 100% right. <laughs> wow. And I was so blown away that he had remembered yeah. that. So those are moments that like yeah. are really great. Mm -hmm. But then there's other moments like discipline, like tough <laughs> times. When you look at your child and you're not seeing the fruit of that. What were, how did y'all navigate that piece? Or disciplining girls Dis versus boys. Yeah. Too. Oh my goodness. They're, I mean, they're just different. They're, they're all different. different. They're different. So, and then their personalities are different and how they receive and, and you think that they didn't receive yes. and you're not going to see the fruit of it. Because right. I did have one child that said, why do you have to pray about everything? Mm. <laughs> like really? Like you really think that God cares about your parking space? And I'm like, <laughs> yes. Princess parking always. Yes, yes. God does care about my, but there's other things that are more important. So, you know, somewhere along the line, they're, they change, you know, they're different. They hear mm -hmm. different. You're not going to see things. So discipline is different as well because they are, you know, um, some of them need more spankings than others, yes. <clears throat> but they're just all different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what works for one doesn't work for the other, Shirtless you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, there was one that you could just send them to their room away look from at them a certain way. Well, yes, yes, there was one I could just give the look to the other one I had to correct. And, and if I put him in his room, that was absolute the worst right. because <laughs> he needs to be around people. He mm -hmm. he's the one that has to be around right. us. And it's like right. to, to tell me to go to my room and leave your presence was just <laughs> awful. You know, mm -hmm. um, so they're they're going to be different the way you you discipline them, and mm -hmm. some of them you can you know just restrict them from something, or they're you know lose their consequence. You know, their consequence right. is losing a privilege. Right. Then that's enough. So yeah, what was it like for you, Betty? In discipline. Discipline. <laughs> in in your day, I mean, you sound like you had some incredible kids, but I'm sure there was some discipline involved. Uh, you know, yeah. not, and that's why they're. <laughs> That's why they're so great. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, that's so good. Sometimes I feel like that. that. Yeah, yes. that's good. We spared a rod. We didn't spare the rod. Yeah. We, you know, the, the discipline, but they didn't have to have the rod all the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, so uh, my oldest son, he's a, he's a gem. He still is. You know, he was the, my oldest son is the the calmer of the four. <laughs> you know, he's, um. I don't know, because he was six when the next one came. And so I don't know. Oh, that, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. his, yeah, yeah. He was An only child almost. All for six years, yes. Yeah. And so he, yes, ma'am. Um, 
okay, mama. Yes, ma'am. He's like that. He's like that. Very polite. Today. Yes, he's like that. I mean, I didn't have to keep telling him things. He tried to get away with a lot of stuff when he was small, but the the, the, the discipline, you know, straight yeah. up, he was easy to discipline. Right. Um, the other three, they were mm, <laughs> <laughs> the, gir- the girls in the middle. So they were, mm, they were okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It took a little more effort, is what you're saying. <laughs> Who was the disciplinary, you or Harry? Uh, me, most of the time. Yeah, because you was, had the most. Yeah, I had he the was... most, uh-huh. And, and um, my baby, he's the boy. He's He was a cool kid, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the youngest ones are the different ones, for sure. <laughs> Addie, yeah. the other day, she was like, can Ryan come check my room? She's cleaning her room. She's yes. like, can he come check my room? Because I don't want you to come check my room. Like, <laughs> they know. Right. Kids They'll will know, know who. Know. Yeah. 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 Andy would want her dad to discipline her, because oh, I yes, don't think I did. he did. Oh, yeah. Wow. He'd say, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I had an uncle that would, he would be sent by my aunt to the room to go spank him, and he would hit the bed and not them. Oh, oh for sure. Because he was like, I can't spank my kids. <laughs> my it did was, prove your mom's to making not work out me. as your well. Your mom's but, making yeah. me. Yeah. Yes. But, uh, Cry like it's hurting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, that's amazing. So, uh, well, yeah. I, I feel like when I, when I discipline, there's something different that comes from Ryan's voice than does from yeah. mine. So yeah. there is some benefit to having both speaking into their lives. Yes. But Well, I will say it's disciplining is important. Like it's it important. Is. You can't always be their friend. And that's I right. had to learn that. And I didn't learn that until mm-hmm. Ryan came along Mm -hmm. but you can't always be their friend you have Mm -hmm. to correct because if you don't correct you're just setting them up for failure Mm -hmm. like they're right you have to have some sort of like not just a discussion but like okay if you did something wrong there has to be a consequence like there Mm -hmm. has to be a punishment whether it's cleaning your bathroom cleaning your sink bowl you know what Mm -hmm. i mean just whatever it is there has to be something because they they just they need that they need a little and for, I mean, having girls, they can't just be super soft all the time. Like you have to build them up a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Like you have to be able to correct them when it's needed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I do have to say consistency is the key to discipline because your discipline is not going to work if you're not consistent. Yeah. Yeah. If you, you know, last time I did it, I didn't get in trouble, but now I'm getting in trouble. So they're mm-hmm. going to put the, kids. They only know how to push. Yeah. The bound, the boundary, mm-hmm. the push, the limit. Okay. There's that's what they're they're kids. Yeah. yeah, they're just kids, you know. And so it's up to us to just always be consistent. And it is a lot of work mm-hmm. because you are busy. You're doing stuff, <laughs> and it's like, oh my gosh, because. I'll tell the story. Just say what you need to say. <laughs> I'll tell the story. <laughs> just say what you need to say. She says because. You know, it's easy to just n- not deal with it and yeah. just kind of, okay, I'm just not going to deal with it. I'm not, but you're not teaching them anything. Again, right. you're, you're you're setting them up for failure. And yeah. I remember taking Andy when she was three or four because she was under the table again at the restaurant. And so <laughs> it's like, okay. And it's like looking at your husband. And he goes, you take her. I'm like, oh, fine, I'll take her. And so I'm like, every time we sit down to have dinner, I end up having to take you to the bathroom and you have to get a spanking. Every time I tell you no, I told you to get out from under the, the table mm-hmm. and and I was ask don't ask. I know that's mm-hmm. funny. We ask silly questions whenever we're disciplining. Like mm-hmm. what why did you do this? Like yeah. what what kind of an answer are you right. expecting? Well, right. she <laughs> gave me true. an answer because I said every time I tell you no, we end up in the bathroom and you end up having a, a, spanking. a spanking and she yeah. said well just don't tell me no it's that oh. easy <laughs> that's what she figured out so it's like moms don't ask those questions because it's kind of yeah. silly because don't yeah. we ask that like yes. why did you do that what made yeah. you do this yes. right i'm yes. thinking what kind of an answer are you expecting right. if you just don't yeah. tell me no then me we no would we wouldn't fine. be having to do this <laughs> and you can have a hot yeah lunch well i got punished because i have my daughter is a product of me exactly so (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. well and kids do reflect their parents i mean it is true it's a good it's a good litmus test to what's coming out of your mouth right is what they say back yeah those comebacks scripture i want to say something yes please it's proverbs 29 and 15 it says the rod and reproof, reproof give wisdom but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame Mm. So when wow. you don't discipline them, that's good. It is that's really good. They bring, they'll bring, you know, to make us sh- yeah. shame. And mm-hmm. that was the other thing that we did. I mean, whenever they did get a spanking, we always did pray with them and tell mm-hmm. them why yeah. it was 
why what what could you have done better what Mm -hmm. what Mm -hmm. what should you have done Mm -hmm. you know um and they that so they'll remember Mm -hmm. also that they're reminded that we love them yeah like i have to i love you so much that's why i'm doing this i love you i love more than it hurts you it does like (laughs) don't forget i love you but you have like this is happening, you know what I mean? Right. Like there's right. a consequence, but I do love you. Yeah. Love you enough them. to help you yeah. here. I, when I put That's Lily I down for a nap, I'm like, it's because I love you that I'm making you nap because you will be happier, I promise. Oh, yeah. I literally yeah. say that all the right. time. Yeah. yeah. Right. We, re- we tell our boys when we, when we spank them, like, this is because we love you so much. We want you to not be little brat kids. <laughs> <laughs> and we want you to grow up to be adults that honor voices of authority Mm -hmm. that understand the rules like we Mm -hmm. like our goal in parenting was never just to have incredible kids but to have incredible adults one day that are on fire for god who love um the house of god Mm -hmm. who are follow directions can hear the voice of god Mm -hmm. and obey on their own without us there (laughs) like we tell lucas is old enough now Mm -hmm. to be like like we want you to fix this at school we can't go into your school and fix this conversation because then the disappointment is a good thing to feel yeah like you should feel disappointment sometimes oh. and work through right. it healthy like healthy emotions yeah and when you have an incident with another kid or a teacher or whatever mm-hmm. we can't be there to swoop in and rescue you all the time you know yeah. like you have to learn how to speak up and advocate for yourself and yeah and do these things and stand on your Problem own two solved. feet yeah you yeah. have to be a critical thinker you have to be sensitive to the holy spirit which kind of leads us to our final question which we ask every episode but with a twist with motherhood like mm-hmm. thinking about your experiences and all the things you've done and the incredible kids you have raised um <laughs> absolutely uh, <laughs> what does it mean to be you winning in life as a mother ah. mm. it's gonna make me cry <laughs> when you see them mm-hmm. become a mother mm-hmm. or a parent mm-hmm. you know and you see how they love their children mm-hmm. and how um even though obviously our priority is always god we know that he's he gave them to us and actually he gave us to them he chose us as to be their mother. And so to win is to know that responsibility and, and um, to trust God to, to help you through it. But when you see your your daughter or yeah. your sons Son. yeah, being mm-hmm. parents and mm-hmm. emulating what, the things that you've taught them, right. then it's like, oh, mm-hmm. thank you, Jesus. I did do something right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's good. There's so much grace to yeah. being a mom you can't beat yourself up for all the mistakes because you will make mistakes and then you pray that they forget them because god does help <laughs> i know god causes them to forget right mm-hmm. it, yeah. he did for joseph that's <laughs> so good. yeah um yeah. so yeah that's good i love that and that's the same for me too um when you see your children being successful mm-hmm. and in in i'm not talking about in the things of the world mm-hmm. right? but that too that's included but um they love the lord too and you see God working in their lives, and they recognize that that is God, you know. Um, so, and and sometimes if they do, you know, make wrong choices, and I will say to them sometimes, well, I, I when I raised you up, I taught you the best that I knew how to do it. I, you know, I did it the way I yeah. knew how to do it. And they'll say, Mom, you did great. <laughs> they'll say, Mom, you did great. And lots of people will tell me. Your mama showed they raised you right, you know, to, to get all those accolades to me like that. And I said, okay, because sometimes I, I think maybe I should have did something different, mm-hmm. but I shouldn't have. I did just what I was supposed to do. Right. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yes. Yeah, that's good. I love that. Do you want to answer it too? Do you want to answer it? Well, we have a different perspective because our kids are so much younger. Right that's now. true. Yeah. So I'll when you think about you. winning, winning as, a mom. as yeah. a mom, what does that mean for you right now? I think happy, healthy children, as mm-hmm. long as they're happy and they're healthy and making good decisions and making good friends and mm-hmm. like Addie's in so much and it makes me so proud because she mm-hmm. has these passions about things. I'm like, I feel like I'm winning as a mom to see my child be mm-hmm. so happy in mm-hmm. these things. Mm-hmm. That good. makes me feel That's good. good. You really know what good. I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like somebody came up to me and was like, she's such a natural. I'm like, I know that's my girl. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it just makes you feel proud. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that's good. Mm-hmm. That's good. I just know there's lots of moms that are in the stage that we're in. With yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that winning 
when your kids are adults seems to me even still seems like a far way off. I oh, know yeah. it's not. Yeah. But yeah, it is. That's what I was. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I know. I, yeah. I mean, one of the, and naturally when moms have fears, you, you think, oh my gosh, I just made the biggest mistake or I'm right, not yeah. potty training them right. Or I'm not doing this right. I mean, mm-hmm. it's like, and they get mad at you and you're like, okay, go tell Oprah. Sure. Or Do- mm-hmm. Dr. <laughs> Phil, you're going to end up being on, yeah. you know, talking about me, but they make it. Right. They're going to be okay. Right. Yeah. 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 What about you? Good. Um, I had put a little bit of thought because I don't know that I can look ahead yet and see my kids as adults. Like, what does it mean that I, that I, oh yeah, I don't even want to think about it. Fully made adult children <laughs> that do all the, you know what I mean? Yes. And, and at some point they become accountable for their own actions. Right. Yeah. Right? So it's yeah. not all about like what are, you know, all about that. But I thought about like, if I can be a mother that's sensitive to the Holy Spirit for each of them, Mm -hmm. that um, like winning as a mom Mm -hmm. means really hearing from God for each of them individually. Yeah. And uh, if I can do that and just be obedient, Mm -hmm. then the rest will come out in the wash. Like Mm -hmm. God is, God Mm -hmm. has these kids. So to be sensitive and humble enough to say like, like, these are your kids. What am I supposed to do with them? It's kind not of. all on you. It's not all on me. Yeah. Yeah. But it does feel like it is. It does yeah. feel like it is. Mm-hmm. And you, and we take on that uh, that mm-hmm. responsibility mm-hmm. when we have mm-hmm. kids. But at the same time, um, they're gifts. And I just want to make sure, like, for, for Wyatt and for Timothy, because they're, like, connected to the hip, that I'm actually parenting them as individuals. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that we're giving Lucas the things he needs to be able to walk out his own walk and handle his own situations Mm -hmm. and have confidence in who he is in Christ. Like those are the, those are the metrics I have now to measure success. And someday Mm -hmm. we want to have kids just like y'all have kids, like incredible adults, adults adults. that Mm -hmm. impact the kingdom of God and Mm -hmm. in their own sphere and do the things that they do. So anyway, that's so good. And it's the foundation you've got, you're putting the foundation in them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The building is going to be only as strong as your foundation. So the foundation is there. So God's Amen. got the rest of That's it. That's right. Yeah. That's so That's good. Right. Wow, mom. <laughs> wow, mom. <laughs> wow, mom. <laughs> I love it. That's great. Well, thank you all for joining us and talking about fun. being a mom. Oh, being a mom is great. Mom. Love it. And thank you all for joining us. Tune in next week for more winning conversations.